Square Enix finally revealed the new Outriders class, the Technomancer, and we already got to play this mid-range support character. So in this video, I want to tell you everything you need to know because this class is a lot of fun. I also want to take a look at some brand new features like crafting and vehicle customization. I want to showcase some challenging boss encounters and an awesome legendary gun that we got near the end of the play session. So a lot to talk about, a like on the video would really help the channel out and let's go. Outriders is one of the games you can win in my August giveaway for a 2020 game of your choice. If you want to participate, just click the link in the pinned comment and be sure you are a subscriber of the channel as well before you enter and good luck. We can of course collect very powerful weapons in Outriders, but with the Technomancer clause, you have a skill to temporarily get special guns like a rocket launcher that has multiple rockets that deal quite a lot of damage or you can choose to get the mini gun that can also take care of enemies rather quickly. You can also use it against bosses to deal a ton of damage and quickly take on the many adds that will also be attacking you. And this is one of the hunts in the game that you can stumble upon while doing a main story mission so they can choose to follow it and this will lead you to a specific area designed for this hunt. In this case it was pretty challenging, we had to fight a ton of Perforo creatures including way tougher alpha ones. Luckily the Technomancer could use Cold Snap that will freeze the area and enemies around him so they become an easy target. Really handy when multiple smaller enemies charge towards you. And you can really go full cryo with the Technomancer if that is what you want by also selecting the cryo turret skill that lets you throw a turret after which it will hit surrounding enemies with freezing bullets. And the health of the turrets will deplete over time so at one point they will self-destruct. Here we go to the class tab for the Technomancer. We see many skills that enhance this cryo playstyle. For example that frozen enemies take increased damage or that the freezing effect will last longer. And the final note of the Tech Shaman skill line is called Overclocked that increases the skill and weapon damage of you and your teammates for 10 seconds but it also will give you a second chance after dying resting you for 50% of your health. So that is pretty nuts, like overall the Technomancer can really be a full on support, buffing you and other characters, but also healing other players. Every class has its own heal like ability. For the tanky Devastator you have to be for example close to a target to get health back. With the Technomancer you simply get health back for shooting enemies. So once again it's rewarding aggressive play. And on top of that you got the fixing wave skill that can heal you and your teammates for 33% of their health. And you can heal your turrets with this too. It has a 26 second cooldown which is pretty great and you might also be able to decrease this. So this will be a very important class for many team compositions. And of course when playing solo this can be very nice too. Just like the self revive of course because otherwise when playing in solo you cannot be rest. You can also throw a mine as a technomancer that deals damage to surrounding enemies and can also interrupt their abilities and you can see that they are costing something thanks to the bar above their health bar. The pain launcher is even more fun to use and can also interrupt enemies you just summon this turret next to you that quickly launches multiple rockets towards some targets and the range is pretty far for this too. And next to Cryo you can also focus on Toxic as your element of choice. You have an ability that gives you these Toxic bullets and there's also this Blighten turret that deals Toxic damage to surrounding enemies. So kind of like similar to the Cryo turret. And you see it in action here during one of the main story encounters. And while making your way through this main path you will find many optional side objectives. For one we had to infiltrate a mine and take out a smuggler leader at the end who had some pretty strong lightning abilities. And we also came across a wanted board with a specific target that we had to take out. And all these side objectives take you to a new area with a slightly different look and sometimes other enemy factions. But again they are optional so you can just focus on the main story if you want. But it's pretty cool to take out these mini bosses like the bloody baron we had to kill could teleport and was pretty tanky. The monster I mentioned earlier could for example create an area of effect danger zone 
on the grounds that you then want to dodge. And when you are successful, you get a trophy for taking out these targets that you can give to NPCs in the hub of this region. And then select one out of three special rewards for your current class. Like in this case, I could select boots that increase the range of the pain launcher. The best rewards are actually loot drop we found was the juggler assault rifle with an insane increase to firepower compared to the other weapons I already got and special perks like the scrap grenade that makes the first shot after reloading a powerful one dealing some nice extra damage to the target and enemies around it but also killing enemies with this weapon would spawn explosives around the target that can also deal some nice extra damage and has a cooldown of six seconds and in outriders you can also upgrade your weapons and gear at the base that you assemble in every region before you head out. So we did not have the legendary weapon here yet, but could already take a look at how this system works. You can namely dismantle items at any point and then unlock the mods that are on this gear in the crafting menu. In this instance, we had no mods unlocked yet, sadly. You can also raise the attributes of the selected item with shards that you can find in the game. Or you can level up the item if you raise in level yourself. So then the items you found at a lower level can also be used later on in the game, which of course is pretty nice. And there was also this option to improve the rarity, which of course pretty interesting. At your base you can also customize the look of your vehicle that takes you to every new location. You cannot drive it but I'm really surprised by the amount of cosmetic options. They have rarities too like the Cerberus one was of course the coolest one and that was a legendary one and it really adds up if you keep adding different elements to your vehicle. Pretty cool and just another thing you can chase in this game. It was really enjoyable to play a level 30 safe and see what the game has to offer later on. And against these bosses you really have to successfully combine abilities of the other classes. And to then in the end see how much impact a legendary weapon can have is pretty cool. It bodes well for the end game and the build diversity if you can really go and combine armor sets, skills and weapons. And we will by the way learn more about the end game in the next next Outriders broadcast that will likely take place in September. The release date is still holiday 2020 for PC, current and next gen platforms so hopefully they give a more specific date soon. I'm still holding my fingers crossed for a delay to early 2021 because this holiday is just insane. But yeah, I will be keeping an eye out and report back when we know more about Outriders. So totally subscribe for more on the game. A like on the video would really help me out. And totally check out my previous Outriders video if you haven't already on the other classes you can play, activities you can find and way, way more. For now though, I will speak to you next time and goodbye.